what is your writing process? How do you start a book? Are you a plotter, a pantser? I think I fall somewhere in between for those. Um, I definitely like to have like some of the, like I'll do a three act story arc and I kind of have like the 15 plot points that I try to kind of keep in mind with what I'm doing. And then I don't necessarily get all of 15 of them, but I try to kind of have a couple sentences for each beat where I want to go. And then Stephanie, where it's like, again, like talking out some of those points, like as I'm getting into the drafting, where it's like, hey, I'm thinking that like, what if I do this or here or this, or it's like, what if this reveal is this? And then having Stephanie have that input where it's like, if she pokes any holes at any of those theories, it makes me look at the drafting process or the plotting. And then it kind of helps it to just develop or spin away in a different way that I didn't necessarily anticipate. So brainstorming with friends, even talking to friends or family members, like saying something and using the power of reaction, like their reaction, if they're not reacting to it, if they've got questions, I think that that's really fun to kind of like put back into your work and yeah, just be fun and be free with it. Like sometimes I'll have like that kind of those beats that I'm looking for. And then I write out a sequence with the scenes so I can just kind of like put them all together at a later point, but it helps with writer's block to just kind of like move on to the scene that I'm feeling and then input later. That's really good advice. So can you speak about collaborating with the Beacon Box and Fairy Loot? <laughs> I was like, I don't know. Like, I think the secret's out for, the Fairy Loot has been like the worst kept secret, I think. But um, uh, yeah, I, it's been a lot of fun, uh, especially with Fairy Loot. I was really involved with everything and um, Stephanie and I are always talking and Nisa is just, she's a dear friend and she's just so very lovingly attention to detail with everything she does. So I think that people who have gotten those are just going to be so, so obsessed with them. Like they're, they're magnificent. Um, yeah. And Beacon Book Box with those sprayed edges. I saw a picture of them yesterday and they're really, they're so beautiful. I, I hope everyone just loves all of them. Um, yeah. It's been really, really fun and just what a, what a dream to have all of these different editions and fun things going on. So yeah, I think that's, that's cool. So this, this question is for both of you. Huh? Are you planning on participating in uh, NaNoWriMo? Mm. Steph? <laughs> no, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm not fast. I don't, I don't do well um, with the fast drafting and I'm like also in the process of revising um, right now. So like my hope is to like have my next book like completely revised by the end of this month. <laughs> Which is still, it's good. And yeah, I, I am in the middle of this, the first draft of book two. So I might try to kind of use that, but at the same time, I feel like if I don't add too much pressure, then I'll kind of get the same amount done anyway, but yeah, not official. Like there won't be an official playing along with it, but I might use it as sprints, but also when we write together and we have those little sprints, sorry, there's a little kitten that just ran into my feet. <laughs> yeah, so not, not officially this year. So but how do you build, oh, go ahead. No, no, that was it. Oh, okay. How do you build and develop banter between characters without making the romance obvious? And also, how did you come to create Thomas Crespo? Like, what was your inspiration? Thomas was just originally a side character where I wanted him to be like a sassy side character who would kind of come in and push Audrey Rose um, through basically annoying her. Where it's like, I think that people have had those people in their lives or in their classrooms where it's like, you have someone who will say something and it's like, Ugh, like this guy, like, who is he? And it's like, I want to just show him that I can do this. And I, I really wanted that for him. And he just kind of kept stealing page time and you know, he became just his own character. So I finally just let him kind of lead with that. And as far as banter, I think with some of it, it's like, I'll have a Word document that I open and I'll just have dialogue that I write out. And it basically, it's like a lot of mood writing, right? I noticed I can't necessarily like create banter on the scene, but I'll have like snippets of dialogue where it's like, I'll just pull from it and kind of insert it into different scenes and kind of work it around that. But yeah, it's kind of just like whenever I'm in the mood for banter, like just sarcasm, I just write anything down that I can and then tweak it as need be. I, I was going to say, uh, that's so funny. I think 
one of one of the ways I do it is having um, my characters having different goals in the scene. So it's like their oh, conversation is at yeah. odds because it's like maybe this person really is like curious, but the other person has these reasons for not saying it. And so like, I think it's very much the motivation yeah. behind it. Like, I can't just do that. I wish I could write, like, have just sheets of banter. I have to have <laughs> banter, like notes in my phone to like three o'clock in the morning. I'll roll over and I'm like, oh God, this is okay. <laughs> that is so fun. <laughs> I like your, I like your method. Now I'm going to be trying that. <laughs>